Oh, hey, little bro. Hey. What's up? Joe has dementia. Oh, what kind? What do you mean, what kind? Well, dementia is actually a symptom of different types of diseases like Alzheimer's. Well, they said he had Alzheimer's, but I don't really know what that means. Oh, well, here, let me show you. So this cell is a neuron. Neurons are what your brain is made up of. These cells are responsible for memories, emotions, and pretty much everything you've ever thought or done. In Alzheimer's disease, these cells are attacked by two abnormal proteins known as plaques and tangles. The plaques form in this extracellular space, and due to a possible immune reaction, this causes neural death. The tangles form within the cell body. These tangles disrupt different cellular processes and make it so the neuron can no longer function. When this happens, the neuron dies. When the neuron dies, it's no longer capable of performing what it was supposed to do. When multiple of them die, that's when you start to lose different brain function. The first area of the brain to be affected is known as the hippocampus. Wait, wait, wait. This, I'm kind of getting it, but the drawings are kind of confusing me. Could I try? Yeah. Well, as I was saying, the amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles destroy neurons in the brain. Amyloid is a generic name for protein fragments that make insoluble deposits. The form of amyloid most closely linked with Alzheimer's disease consists of a string of 42 amino acids and is therefore referred to as beta amyloid 42. The neurofibrillary tangles are made up of a protein called tau. At first, these destroy neurons in the hippocampus and interrenal cortex. This is a region where memories are first formed. Is that why Grandpa Joe can't remember some things? Yes, exactly. Then as the stages of Alzheimer's progress, the plaques and tangles move to an area of the brain which helps to process language located in the medial temporal lobe. Then, the frontal lobes are the next area of the brain that are attacked. Logical thinking, such as solving problems and grasping concepts, becomes more of a challenge. Then, emotional regulation slowly fades as the plaques and tangles affect the limbic system. Next, the part of the brain that interprets the different aspects of sound, smell, and sight is a is affected along with the cerebral cortex. At this point, hallucinations are common. Eventually, the deepest memories are forgotten as the disease moves through the rest of the brain. Towards the end, the cerebellum and the midbrain are compromised, resulting in difficulties with balance and coordination. Eventually, the primary respiratory control center in the medulla oblongata fails. At this point, regulation of breathing is no longer met and this results in the patient's death. Does that all make sense? Yeah, I think I got it. Wow, Hayes, that was pretty good. I guess I can explain the stuff and you can draw the stuff. Yeah, it was. Thanks, Riley. Of course.